This video is brought to you by Brilliant. Last week, the Washington Post published an article claiming that Zelensky and Ukraine's high command are considering escalating their attacks inside mainland Russia. According to the article, earlier this year, Ukrainian high command considered using long-range drones to attack troop deployments in southern Russia, blowing up the Soviet-built Druzba gas pipeline that runs from Russia to Hungary, and, perhaps most notably, invading the Russian city of Belgorod. This comes less than a week after Evgeny Prigozhin, the leader of the Wagner Group, publicly warned the Kremlin that Ukraine could attack Belgorod as part of their counteroffensive, and on the back of a series of drone strikes on Russian soil, including an attempted drone strike against the Kremlin earlier this month. While the report was quickly denied by the Ukrainian president, who insisted a day later that, quote, we have neither the time nor the strength to attack Russia, on Monday it was reported that the Russian Volunteer Corps and the Freedom of Russia Legion, two pro-Ukrainian groups composed of anti-Putin Russians, had advanced into Belgorod Oblast, taking control of a couple of settlements near the Belgorod-Ukraine border. So in this video, we're going to have a look at just what's happened in Belgorod, why Ukraine is invading Russia, and why this shouldn't come as that much of a surprise. Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. So let's start by looking at what happened on Monday. On Monday morning, the Russian Volunteer Corps and the Freedom of Russia Legion attacked a border post on the Belgorod-Ukraine border. The Russian Volunteer Corps is a far-right Russian nationalist paramilitary unit with a slightly confused ideology. According to their founder, they don't like Zelensky because he's not an ethnic Russian, but they think Putin's worse because he's apparently turning Russia into a multicultural police state. The Freedom of Russia Legion, first formed in March 2022, is a unit consisting of Russian defectors and other Russian volunteers who oppose Putin's regime for other, more normal reasons. While both groups are aligned with Ukraine and have fought alongside the Ukrainian army, the Ukrainian army has said that both groups are independent. Their attack in Belgorod started by shelling the border post before advancing on it with a handful of armoured vehicles. Then they advanced further into Belgorod, moving through the settlements of Gozinka, Glotovo and Gorapodol before encountering resistance at Graveron, which lies about 8 kilometres from the Ukrainian border. While this has little strategic significance, it's deeply embarrassing for the Kremlin and sparked mass panic in Belgorod, with Russian citizens queuing to leave the city. Now, Ukraine immediately denied responsibility for the attack, but the Freedom of Russia Legion claimed that they weren't fighting for Ukraine, but rather fighting for Russia to liberate these territories from the Putin regime. Nonetheless, while Kiev might have plausible deniability, it's hard to imagine that this goes ahead without their consent and they at least knew about the attack in advance. The Ministry of Internal Affairs, for example, claimed that the groups were trying to create, quote, a security strip for the protection of Ukrainian civilians. And as the attack was ongoing, the head of Ukraine's intelligence services published a video urging Russians to surrender, warning that things were only going to get worse. So you get the idea. While Ukraine clearly has plausible deniability, it's hard to imagine that they weren't involved in some way. And, well, this shouldn't come as a surprise. Since as early as April last year, when two low-flying Ukrainian helicopters crossed into Russia and fired on an oil depot in Belgorod, the Ukrainians have been attacking targets inside Russia. In August, mysterious explosions in Crimea's Sarki Air Base damaged eight Russian planes, and Daria Dugina, the daughter of prominent Russian nationalist Alexander Dugin, was killed by a car bomb. While Ukraine never admitted to the latter, American officials later admitted that they believed Ukraine to be responsible, and that Dugin himself was the intended target. Then, in October, the Crimean Bridge, which connects the peninsula to mainland Russia, was damaged by a truck bomb, and drones attacked Russian ships docked at Sevastopol, forcing the Russians to blockade Sevastopol Bay. Then, in December, the Ukrainians carried out two separate drone attacks at Engels Air Base, damaging two planes and killing six Russian servicemen. These attacks have become more frequent in the last couple of months. In February, Ukraine carried out its first coordinated drone attack against Russia, blowing up an oil depot and forcing St. Petersburg to impose a 200-kilometer no-fly zone around its airports. 
In March, there was an explosion at Taganrog Air Base, shellings in the towns of Zuravlovka and Nekhotevka, and reports that the Russian Volunteer Corps had attacked a couple of villages in the Klimovsky district. In April, an explosion at a cafe in St. Petersburg killed Russian war correspondent Vladen Tatarsky. In May, a freight train derailed after an explosive device detonated along the Bryansk Uneka railway line, and an explosive laden drone got within spitting distance of the Kremlin, which the Russians described as an assassination attempt against Putin. These attacks have become so frequent that, last Tuesday, Putin's press secretary, Dmitry Peskov, announced that one of the main aims of the military operation was now to stop the shelling of Russia. Now, while Ukraine hasn't officially admitted culpability for all of these attacks, Ukrainian officials often allude to it. Ukrainian presidential adviser Mikhailo Podolyak, for example, described the events as karma. And when asked about Ukraine's involvement on the attacks inside Russia, the head of Ukraine's intelligence agency simply responded by saying that, all I will comment on is that we have killed Russians and will continue to kill Russians anywhere in the world until Ukraine's complete victory. So you get the idea. Ukraine has been attacking targets inside Russia more and more frequently since the war began, which is why what happened in Belgorod shouldn't come as much of a surprise. This is one of the reasons that Zelensky has been so keen on long-range missile systems like the American-made ATACMS, because it would allow Ukraine to strike targets deep inside Russia with missiles, and why the UK's decision to supply Ukraine with Storm Shadow cruise missile systems is such a big win for Zelensky. Storm Shadows have a range of over 250 kilometers, more than triple that of HIMARS, and will allow the Ukrainians to strike targets deep inside Russian territory. So why is Ukraine so focused on striking targets inside Russia? Well, in some cases, it makes tactical sense. Attacking Belgorod could force Putin to redeploy some troops along the northern border, and blowing up ammo dumps or the Crimean Bridge, for example, puts a strain on Russian logistics. However, the main reason is to put political pressure on Putin. Ukraine's commander-in-chief, Valery Zaluzny, made this explicit in an interview with Yahoo News last year, when he argued that, because most Russians are insulated from the war and so consider it remote, there's no political pressure on the Kremlin to change course. In his interview, he argued that it was the task of the Ukrainian army in 2023 to make ordinary Russian citizens more aware of the war, so that it feels, quote, sharper, more natural, and quite tangible. Zaluzny's argument is basically that, even if Russia isn't a democracy, Putin and the Kremlin are still clearly conscious of public opinion. After all, it's not like Putin is unpopular within Russia. And it doesn't look like he's going for a second wave of conscription, even though the Russian army is clearly struggling, presumably because Putin and co are worried about how the public will react. This is probably why Putin hasn't responded to these attacks with some form of asymmetric escalation, like another wave of conscription or a tactical nuke. He doesn't want to admit to the Russian public that the SMO isn't going to plan. In this regard, it looks like the attack on Belgorod has been a great success for Ukraine. Even before the attack, we were already seeing angry videos from Belgorod residents demanding that the authorities provide them with weapons to protect against the coming Ukrainian offensive. And these anxieties will only be more pronounced today, especially because the region has apparently had to be evacuated. Ultimately, we live in an increasingly complex world where things are feeling less stable, especially economically. So it would be great if politicians were better at, well, maths and decision making. Fortunately, they could do that easily if they signed up to Brilliant, the STEM learning platform where you can learn everything from quantum computing or algebra to logical decision making, a skill severely lacking at the moment. It doesn't even take long to learn either. These complex topics are broken down into accessible chunks, designed around your busy schedule. That means that by spending just a few minutes a day, you can accumulate new knowledge over time in an actually fun way. As time goes on, you'll get used to that empowering feeling of learning too, because this isn't just about memorization and lectures. Brilliant teaches you by doing, using active learning techniques to teach you the principles behind otherwise complex subjects, and ensuring you actually understand what's going on. So whether you want to brush up on your basic math skills, 
improve your employment prospects by learning about future technologies, or just have fun with coding, you can check out everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days. Click on the link in the description. Plus, the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Thanks for your support.